Welcome to Entreprogrammers Podcast, the podcast for developpreneurs, with your hosts, Josh Uro, Derek Bailey, and John Sonmez. The podcast where you get to be a fly on the wall listening to real conversations of three developers trying to tackle the challenges they face as entrepreneurs. Hey, Josh Earl here with a quick message from our sponsor, Signal Leaf. Look, doing a podcast is a lot of work. The last thing you need is a podcast hosting service that makes you jump through a bunch of hoops just to get your episodes published. My co host, Derek, created Signal Leaf with one goal in mind to build the easiest podcast hosting service out there. It's the simplest way to get your new podcast up and running quickly and without any hassle. If you're thinking of starting your own podcast, just use Signal Leaf. Then you can get back to polishing the lyrics for your own official podcast rap song. I still had 50 meg. <laughs> <laughs> you and your 150 up and down. Yeah. Man, when when the uh, when the cable guy, the Verizon guy, came to install it, yep. he was like, he was grumpy. First of all, well, it goes up to like <laughs> five hundred now. You can get, and Seriously? and he was, yeah, you get five hundred up, five hundred down. It's uh, holy cow! I almost pulled the trigger on it, but it's like three hundred dollars a month, I think. And what are you spending yeah. now? Well, uh, now I'm spending a hundred and twenty dollars a month for hundred fifty yeah. up, hundred fifty down. So. I'd, I'd leave it right there. That sounds perfectly yeah. fine to me. Yeah, I don't just, really. And that's, <laughs> that's just internet then. You don't have like TV lumped on there or anything. Well, here's the funny thing. So I have <laughs> basic cable on there, right? right. Okay. <laughs> so I call it when the guy comes to install. You know, he's like, "Why don't you have your cable box hooked up, dude?" And I was like, because I don't watch TV, dude. <laughs> and, it, and he's like, uh, well, then why are you – I don't – you know, he was grumpy, like I said. He was like, right. what the hell are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, let me call customer service. So I called him up, and I'm like, okay, if I cancel my cable and just get internet, right, what will it cost me? And the guy's like, well, hold on. Let me uh, – no one's really ever done that before. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure someone's done it. Come on. Yeah, right. And then, and then he's like, it would cost you $20 more a month. Okay. <laughs> so I said, so you're giving me basic cable and a cable box that you're renting out to me for free because I'm not paying for the rental of it, uh, and and $20? Um, I don't understand. Like, but he said, no, that's how the pricing works. So apparently right. it makes sense to have basic cable. But anyway, when the guy came to install it, he was like, no one ever gets – like, what are you going to do with 150 down and 150 up if you're not downloading large files? <laughs> I told him I said I record a lot of HD video and, and upload it. So, yeah. But it's, he, nice. said, he said hardly anyone orders the 150. I was thinking – I don't know. I, I mean, I would think a lot of people would. but Yeah, seriously. I would if I had it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I have a hundred down, but it's like seven up. Yeah, it was like a difference. Like I was on seventy-five, seventy-five, and it was thirty dollars more a month to go to one fifty. Right. Like, yeah, that's well worth it. Now to go to three hundred, it was another seventy dollars a month. Not worth it. No. Nope. You know. So. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah, I think I'm only like I'm. I think I'm like <laughs> twenty-five or thirty. Somewhere between twenty-five and fifty up, uh, down, and like. Five up, I think. Yeah, yeah. maybe the, the popper, the bandwidth popper here. So, <laughs> my my uh, friend and coworker that John talked to yesterday, um, he has like six and one. <laughs> oh, well, I had for when I started at track about, I had DSL. Yeah, and that was awful. It was like four down and like four hundred k up. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Programming the, and screen sharing, and it was just wasn't working for me. The only time I've ever had DSL is when I lived in Dallas, and I was in a big apartment complex. It was, it was like a, a thirty thousand square foot apartment complex, so it had its own hub for phone lines. Yeah. So the, wow. the DSL connection there was like fifteen down, and and three or four up, and this is back in like two thousand one. When getting any more than two or three was considered, holy crap, that's the most I've ever heard of. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> at my at my my first job out of school and well, the college I went to, they had one, uh, like one. I forget even forget the term now. Uh, T is it T T one line? T one line. Yeah. yeah. They had one T one line for the entire school. Yeah. Same here. And, yeah. It was it was atrocious. Like it was. 
it, I mean, it, it was it was it was worse than a fifty six K modem. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, good times. And yeah. Now they complain about not having a hundred. <laughs> I know it's just so <laughs> crazy because I remember as a kid going to be like dialing up with my oh, twenty four hundred yeah. baud modem on yep. BBS systems and like like getting you know downloading like. A a hundred k shareware game yeah. and it and leaving the modem on overnight to get yeah. up like a hundred k and then I remember one time this this Sysop, he lived near me so I went over with a one point four four floppy disk you know floppy <laughs> disk to his house and he let me copy my whole disk full I had a I had a one point four Meg worth of stuff on that floppy disk and I was like oh this is so awesome that would have taken me like Two weeks to download. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, yeah. Good times. Now we download 1.4 meg in uh, in a fraction of a second, a tenth of a second, or whatever. Now we download 1.4 meg for one freaking image on one web page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insane. Yeah. All right, we should probably get down to business. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, I Actually, I, I've I've got something to to talk about. That, right. uh, if you, unless uh, unless you guys got some urgent, you want to jump in. No. Uh, so I just got off a call with Manning about the soft skills book, and they want to do a video okay. package course deal with it. Oh, nice. So they want to do a video okay. version. So I think that's a good idea. Um, I mean, my initially I thought, oh, maybe I'll do a Pluralsight course on it, mm -hmm. and it'll help promote the book, but. They want to kind of sell it on Safari books online and sell it with the book, like as a kind of like that the the you know the whole like like I'm doing with the how to market yourself and right right and right like Nathan Nathan Barry does, but they they like that mm -hmm. and Discover Meteor guys did, so they like that, so they want to do that. So I'm I'm probably going to be in negotiations with them about that, and I'm suggesting a, a 50 50 royalty percentage. I think that's probably fair since I'll be doing. Ninety percent of the work. And that's what you would get from Prague Prague. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because I'll be doing all, and then the, I mean, their value is their distribution channel. So right, right. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think that'll. I, I'm I'm up for doing that. I think that would be pretty cool. Do a do a course on that. So yeah, that definitely would be. It'd be some pretty good income for you. I mean, how much? So how many sales do you have on the book already? Uh, it's over a thousand at this point, I believe, nice. on the on the Meep. So, I mean, that's not you know, I got a ten percent royalty rate. That's pretty standard for right for books. So, it's not a a huge huge. I haven't I haven't hit my advance yet. Of course, the book hasn't officially launched yet. I, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely pass my advance. Mm -hmm. um, so, but uh, but as you know, you know, book royalties, you don't really make money. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, with most publishers, you don't. Yeah, um, unless your book does phenomenally well. Right. I mean, if if the book sells a hundred thousand copies, you know, like clean code and books like that, then then you. Right. Uh, but but with videos, selling the whole package for a couple hundred dollars, mm -hmm. it, it would it would certainly be be uh, be worth worth doing. So. Yeah. So would that be like supplemental in info, or how, like how would you structure that? Well, what I would love to do with it is to do like follow the chapters of the book, like do um, kind of like modules for the sections, but then like just do like kind of how I do the HD YouTube videos on just talking about the chapter, kind of not reading it verbatim, just kind of talking about the concept and chapter, drilling down a little bit more into a few things, and then doing screencasts on some parts of the stuff, like where like the productivity chapter, mm -hmm. where I talk about how to plan my week and use a Kanban board. It's kind of hard to put that in a yeah. book, like right? If you if you show it, or even on the fitness side too, it's like I try to kind of put a workout in there, but I could use PowerPoint slides and visuals to show and really. Really, uh, th those those parts could really go more in depth with right with the video format. So, mm -hmm. but I don't know. So that's my nice. my big news. <laughs> nice, cool, cool to see actual publishers getting on board with that. Yeah, model, cause it makes a lot of sense. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think that's what we're gonna see in the future is a lot of these package deals. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it's it's tough though because I I don't know if they'll have as much. I mean. Creating video is 
difficult and it's a different skill set than writing a book. It's hard enough to get someone to write a book. Like, <laughs> yes, I, right. I mean, a lot of publishers, the complaint I hear is that they sign an author for a book, the author doesn't know how to write, or they they're just they just just can't get be, meet their deadlines. It draws out forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So trying to get you know, I, I don't know how many authors you'll get that have the skills to do the video and then that will actually get it done. So I don't know. We'll see though. Yeah, yeah I mean, unless know, they have the sort of production department. Right. Yeah, and most I don't think very many publishers have any real production for video yeah. yet. Um, the guys at Pride Prog have a, in the, they they have an editor that does pretty well. Um, he outsources a lot of the work though. Yeah. Uh, for for screencasts and um, I don't know if any of them I don't know of any you know traditional book publisher in the tech industry that has a real video production department though. Hey, hey, here's another business. Uh oh. oh. My monitors have just decided to <laughs> blink. Oh. Yay. This is a, this is a rant. And then they maximize all my windows. Awesome. <laughs> so Maybe. now I gotta find the window. But here's yeah. another business idea. Maybe maybe we should create a production studio for book publishers. I would. I'll take the money, but I do not want to be. <laughs> I am so tired of producing videos. Yeah. It is. I mean, I'll, I, I'd, I'd be happy to organize and be the business side of it, but I will. I'm going to outsource all that. Because <laughs> you could take. I mean, because just the problem I described, right? Let's say you talk to a book publisher and said, "Hey." Yeah, your your author might not do video course, but I can read their book. Right. I can go through it, and then I can produce a course out of it, and then record it for you, produce it, mm -hmm. and you know at you know at a twenty five percent royalty. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's that actually, I mean, if if the if that model starts to catch on with other pub with publishers in general, mm -hmm. that could that it's like it's one way to do kind of a value add, take something that somebody's already done. Yep. You know, and that's part of the problem with I think with book publishing in general is like, you know, the 80/20 curve, like you're you're only capturing a tiny sliver of the the revenue available yeah for a lot of people. So right. and that's really all these packages do is let you capture, you know, more of that that right side of the curve. Well, if you think about it too, like the production that goes into a printed book is so much. I mean, mm -hmm. the writing is a lot of work. The right. editors is a lot of work. The graphics, the formatting, layout, right. all that stuff is a ton of work. Mm -hmm. right? And then you sell the thing for 20 bucks, 30 bucks, and you give 50% off to sell it for 15. Eventually, it yeah. goes down to 10 bucks, and then you throw it on the dollar bin, right? Um, right. But well, and, and you're missing part of that, too, actually, is that a lot of that information started this happens a lot in like marketing that that information started off being sold for two grand yeah you know, at some seminar or, or a you know a hundred dollar ebook and then that's what happened with Perry Marshall's original AdWords book he sold I think for dollars and then he basically cannibalized his own business because he knew if somebody was somebody's gonna write the book that ended up on Amazon if yeah. it wasn't him so he just basically cannibalize his own business and he doesn't sell the other book anymore yeah but yeah but I mean with the video if you add video to the book then you can take a $29 book and you can make it $100 $150 easily so yeah I mean yeah. I mean you you're producing a lot more quality but <laughs> I hate video <laughs> <laughs> I take every video that I buy if I if possible I rip the audio track off of it and format it into an audio book and I listen to it on my iPhone with Audible <laughs> because I just hate I will not sit there and watch video I just I, I won't do it it it's it has its purpose I I don't know I I just yeah. I just went through a Pluralsight course on bootstrap mm -hmm. which was very well done yes. and I just you know I, I had it on fast forward but man that <laughs> bootstrap into my brain real John watched that whole thing in five minutes <laughs> But but it really did help because I could see yeah. it like that right. in that case and it just like all of a sudden I was like okay I get Bootstrap now now like I don't I don't remember all of the things but I know what's available now and if right. I wanted to use it I could I could easily apply yeah. it now so 
Yeah, there are, there are some things that really do better in a video format. Yes. And yeah, I agree. Sometimes I agree. it's hard for me to figure out, figure out the difference. You know, okay, should this be a blog post or should this be a video? You know, what's going to be the most effective way to communicate this information? Yeah, I find that like when whenever it's really important to see how all the pieces fit together, video there have I I, I there I, I will eat crow on that. There have been times where I definitely have watched video and yeah. found it to be extremely helpful because. Like I think when I was I was playing with Node at one point and, and Ruby on Rails and like seeing kind of seeing just how people navigate back and forth between the different parts and how they fit together, that was really, really helpful. Right. Yeah, sometimes it's really helpful to watch someone work that's good mm -hmm. in an environment yep. when you're learning because you're like, oh, I didn't, because there's so much nuances that you don't necessarily pick yeah. up that are too hard to explain. Like just to see someone's actual workflow, it's like, okay, you pick up a lot of stuff. Right. But, yeah. Uh, it, what what's what's not to do? You just have to pick a good topic. Man, I spent so many. I spent hours creating that meteor blog post. Yep. That <laughs> tutorial, and then I did a a free thirty minute uh, video on it, a uh, high quality, edited it, and everything, and like <laughs> nothing dribble. <laughs> I expected uh -huh. it to blow up on Hacker News and to because because I put a huge amount of quality and work into that, but I. To just not be that popular. I don't know. Huh. No idea. It. I don't really hear a whole lot about it anymore these days. So it wouldn't be surprising if it kind of fell out of favor. Yeah. Let's let's do our favorite Google Trends thing here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Let's see if Meteor has fallen off the. Well, I mean, what do you expect when you name your project Meteor? You know, you got to expect it to burn out quickly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it should have been Comet, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Just comes back around and back so around. Here's, you can even live host it, so that's like my... Oh, and I bootstrapped it. Look at I used my little... My fledgling bootstrap skills to make my to-do list look pretty. Nice. Hmm. And it's interactive, so like whatever you add will... That's the cool thing is you automatically with Meteor get that functionality. Yeah, it looks like it was it was definitely rising quickly. Kind of peaked in uh, in 2013, right? And has dropped off since then. So, John, you you <laughs> you missed the crest on that one. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> well, I did a Pluralsight course in 2013 on it. Right. So. Okay, well there you go. Perfect. But yeah, maybe when 1.0 comes out. <laughs> I mean, I I've been I had a miss miss miss. Okay, I did I did a pretty in depth. Uh, post on Sierra online mm -hmm. on going yeah. to the founders mm -hmm. that pretty much bombed I and that took me a long time and then I did that treadmill walking on the treadmill and that took me forever to write up that thing and I, I don't think even one comment on that like that Ouch. bombed and then the next week I did the meteor one I was trying to do these epic blog posts and every single one of them is so far has bombed Ouch. So. Yeah, I'm, I very rarely read the epic length posts. I mean, as much as Josh, as much as you love talking about how you do better with them, I if I see this big giant post, I'll read the first few paragraphs, scroll through it pretty quickly to try and find something interesting and move on because I don't have time to read two hours worth of stuff. Yeah, for me it really depends. I mean, if I'm interested in it, I will read the whole thing. For sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can't say I do that on all of them, but the idea is, you know, enough people do, I guess. But you also have to. I mean, topic selection on those is also pretty important. Right. So, just making a lot your post longer <laughs> isn't necessarily <laughs> isn't necessarily going to make it a home run. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I put in depth work into those like this, yeah. but. Who knows? It's just it, it, some of them might have longer tails too. Like with the right. treadmill post, I was hoping that it would rank, and then right. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. let me, going back to that, the the when I was passing that blog post around about that strategy, the the, the there were several components to it, and one of them was um, you know finding 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 people who had already published uh, links to a post that was similar. That you, yeah. So you write, you'd find the best posts possible on a topic, write something better, 
and then go to all the people who had published links to it. So that's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, but yes, yeah, so there was a lot of promotion involved in that too. To right. Get, to get yeah. I, I got to follow up with my life hacker contact on the, the treadmill one because oh, okay. they, they had to email me back and said, so thanks cool. for the reminder. But yeah, I, I did that with the meteor. Actually, I went and found all the meteor. Like I spent one Pomodoro going, looking on stack overflow, Quora, uh, and just tutorials and, and link collections for Meteor tutorials, and I emailed all of them and and sent that out. And I did a Fiverr gig to have someone else oh like boy. find stuff. But <laughs> the Fiverr gig didn't work out, but <laughs> it made off with your five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. But yeah, I don't know. We'll see. It's a it's a it's a hit and miss type of. You, you got to perfect the. But yeah. I definitely, I, I, I like, I haven't given up on the approach. I think creating epic posts and then spending enough time to promote those posts and to right probably makes sense. So. Well, the other part of that strategy too was how you actually pick the post, which was to basically reverse engineer what people were already sharing. Yeah. So you know, so you get, you you can find, so you could find. I mean, I don't know. Maybe Meteor JS would have just never. If you, if you think of the name of the site, there's one that's really good. Um, look real quick, I can tell you. Uh, uh, BuzzSumo. Yeah, BuzzSumo. Yeah, you could see whether Meteor JS stuff did anything on on Twitter and Facebook and etc. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been flopping all around lately. That, uh, <laughs> I did that that Noah Kagan thing I was telling you about. The, it's, oh, yeah. It's, it's the email course that you're in. Right. I don't know, okay. You must not be signed up for it because you must not be getting the... <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting them. I just don't read them. Oh, well, kind of terrible. For, for lesson one or for day, I guess it's the second email, he basically said, okay, go to BuzzSumo, put in your, your, uh, your domain, and mm-hmm. look and see what the most shared thing is. Mm-hmm. Okay, then take uh, the headline of that and make that the headline of your pop-up, you know, email collection form, and mm-hmm. then make it so, and then say that they can get that information, and then make it so when they sign up, it redirects them to that blog post. Which and he said that'll capture you'll get a two percent, uh, you know, should at least get a two percent conversion on that. Now you have two percent of your visitors, right? right. That's, that's a good step one. Um, okay. I actually got better results this morning when I changed it to um, uh, when I just changed the color and the format of that pop-up box. Oh, I couldn't use okay. I couldn't use the AppSumo tools because okay. they kept on breaking when I tried to make it custom. It I went to the custom tab and then it wouldn't go back. So I don't know. Oh, okay. But, um, yeah, I I had I I'm using that actually. I'm using it's Sumo Me. Yeah, the, the plugin. Yeah, I've been using that on Sublime Text Tips. I ended up what I ended up doing was um, making. Uh, I made a custom, a completely custom form. I oh, installed it. Yeah, I installed it a while ago though. I don't know what updates. I haven't looked at it in a little while. I don't know what updates they've made. But at the time, um, you could kind of. It was a little. You could customize the text of the pop up, but then uh, if you wanted to have a completely custom style. The easiest thing to do is just to take HTML and paste it in, which is what I ended up doing. Okay, because they were selling. Now they're selling like the piece. It's kind of a, a great, like a smart business model because you get the tools free, then you get the right. basic stuff, and then they sell you ten dollars to get rid of the badge off of your site, and then right. it's like in-app different upgrade. templates or yeah, <laughs> it's all all in-app purchases essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, the one I have now has three hundred thirty-six impressions and 10 conversions so it's almost at a three percent rate oh okay well, but that doesn't mean that they double opted in true um, and true. my my previous one the how to market yourself pop-up was doing I think a 3.19 percent okay conversion rate so I don't know I'll, I'll have to see well but it sounds like you exceeded Noah's <laughs> promised uh, two yeah two percent conversion rate there or at least it's looking that way so well, it's not a conversion if they haven't uh, doubled true. opted. Yeah, in. that's true. Yeah, really, because because he's saying he was like, I mean, in the email he was saying, you know, if you have five thousand visitors, then you need to be getting or you know, 
two percent of those emails per day sign up. So a hundred emails a day you should be collecting right as a base. So that's I was trying to get to that base. Right. But I don't know. We'll see. I'll follow along and see how the thing goes. I should probably start reading those and following that advice as well. I've I've backed off a while, actually almost a month ago, I backed off on my Twitter ads for my email courses and my subscriber rate is actually decreasing at this point. It, it was up over 4,200 for a while and I'm down to around 4,170. So it's, it's not moving a lot, but it is slowly declining. So I need to I need to start looking at a few more things to, to keep that up without having to pay for Twitter ads to run my yeah. my email yeah. courses. Oh, by the way, here's something that might help you. I forgot to mention this last week. I updated to the latest version of Tweet Adder, and they oh, yeah. fixed the problem. It works <gasps> so well now. Okay. What's Tweet Adder? Um, <laughs> It's a uh, it's a gray hat tool <laughs> for following and unfollowing people on Twitter. Yeah, I see. Yes, it just makes it easy for you to follow and unfollow. So you follow like two or three hundred people a day, unfollow people who aren't following you back. It, right. It kind of you still have to click like a hundred, four hundred times or whatever, but. It they they it got easy. rid of the the so the problem that we were having that led me to just completely abandon it was um, every 10, like it would rate limit you and it would throw up an error message, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you'd have to click to dismiss the error message and then, yeah, it was a real pain. So um, they uh, so they got rid of that. Are they just buffering it more intelligently now, maybe? Uh, I think Twitter changed their API. Oh, okay. So oh, my screen just flashed again. I don't know what the heck this problem is. I need a MacBook 5 I mean a 5K Mac Pro. That's my next desktop computer right now. Unless something else comes out better, I'm totally gonna dual boot him, um, uh, that and get a 5K monitor. Hey, I need to I need to step away for a sec. I'll be right back. Sure. All right. Oh man. What was I just looking for? I can't remember what it was before something my monitor flash. Something about tweet adder. I don't know. Oh, uh, I can't remember now. But I do know that um, that my sales of my course, since I started doing the the tweet, the adding people on Twitter and using Tweet Adder mm -hmm. uh, this month, I don't know if it's. I think it's related, but I've I've sold like I've been my I've seen my sales increase by probably uh, probably double. Nice, so. very nice. Yeah, my sales for everything are declining. My ebook. Um, uh, I've made a few sales on it recently, but not very many. I've, I'm down to unpaid royalties of eight hundred and ninety dollars, so I'll be getting you know three hundred and sixty bucks at um, in November, and then probably you know three or four hundred in December, and and just kind of declining from there. Watch me code is also not doing so well. I mean, I'm, I'm not losing a ton of subscribers, but I'm not gaining them very quickly either. Hmm. It's like every month I lose, you know, 15 more. So I'm down to 325 at this point, which I'm not real sure. You know, I'm kind of, kind of in this pattern of just releasing episodes and continuing continuing on about my business and letting it roll on its own and not really worrying too much about it but in the back of my mind I am worrying about it I'm I'm more interested in getting signal leaf really really up and running so I've been working on that uh, this week a lot but watch me code and ebook sales and everything else is is definitely on the decline yeah I mean I think you have the right approach. Just keep on moving forward. Like, don't worry too much about the because you're adding more content. You're, right. I mean, you're you're adding more content to your blog. You're getting more people that know of of Derek Bailey. So, you know, that's going to translate to 
um, and, and the signal leaf you, seems you're getting some traction on. I like that thing you added, by the way, the six-week uh, report. Uh, oh, yeah. That's awesome. That's for perfect the, for advertising. Yeah, for the for the individual podcast. Mm -hmm. And I, I've been – I haven't – have not been writing as much code this week as I wanted to, but my plan was to um, get that in place for the the podcast overall this week as well. I know how to do it. I have the prototype code in place, but um, I, I don't have it. Actually, I, I haven't taken the time this week to put that in place for the podcast. I've been working on a lot of marketing stuff, yeah. um, trying to get a new landing page in place for this um, Josh and I come up with the idea of uh, putting together a, a, a cheat sheet, basically a podcast launch cheat sheet to help people oh, nice. yeah. get launched quickly and easily to give them just a basic rundown of the things they need to do to, just to get launched. Um, and I've got, so I've got a landing page put together for that. I've got a form where you can sign up for the, to get the cheat sheet. I've got that integrated with Drip. Now I actually need a cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah, becoming the problem. I keep putting that off because I keep thinking I don't know what to put into this. I'm not sure. So I tried. I sent out a, a tweet earlier this week asking people, you know, what do you want to know about launching a podcast? And yeah. I got one question, which so I mean I answered the guy's question, and that'll likely turn into a blog post, but. It just it didn't really help out for the for the cheat sheet idea, but I I did end up getting um, two blog posts written this week, which was good. I did one that's already live. Um, it's a uh, what is it? It's a why do you need a, a podcast host? What is podcast hosting and why do you need it? And so that was that was a pretty good post overall. That was one that I had actually answered somebody's email um, directly a couple yeah. of weeks ago and been meaning to turn that into a blog post and I think it turned out pretty well. And then um, someone else um, asked me on Twitter for advice on uh, microphones, what microphones to use because he had been doing uh, a, a USB headset and he didn't like the audio quality. So I put together my list of recommended microphones, you know, starting with just use your laptop or your phone or whatever you have and, you know, and then go into the USB headset, the cheapo, you know, $25 thing, and then that uh, $50 mic that I used to record last week in the hotel room. Yeah. And then the, the $90 Blue Yeti, and then the $200 Rode Podcaster that we're all using, and then the, um, what was it, the Heil PR40 after that. So it, so that blog post is, is written and scheduled to publish next week. Nice. And then that question that the other guy asked me about content, about topics, you know, that'll be a pretty good blog post. But I really need to get back into writing code because there's a lot of functionality that I want to get in place in Signal Leaf, including that six-week report for the at the podcast level. And I, I know how to do it now. I'd been thinking and thinking and thinking about that report for like six months or more trying to figure out how I was going to do it. And I kept waiting for keen IO to implement some things that I want and kept pushing it off. Yeah. And, you know, eventually realized, okay, you know, even if they do put these things in place, there's going to be a lot of code that I have to write in order to make it work the way that i had been thinking about it with having pre-computed values and running on a, on a nightly basis to, to get those values so that I could then report off the pre-computed values. And a couple of weeks ago, it just, it something clicked in my head like, Oh, Hey, if I run this on an individual podcast or individual episode, now let me, let me see if I can do that first. And so I did it and I published it and didn't really talk about it. I just kind of pushed it out <sighs> there. Um, and so it's out there at the individual episode level now. You can see um, your your six week lifespan for your individual episode. And then I realized, oh well, I can take that same query that I ran for the for the individual episode, and I can just stack that together, you know, ten times, twenty times, however many times I need yeah. for for the whole podcast. And I can uh, I can do that with the existing 
Keen IO API because they let me batch up queries. I don't have to send, you know, if there's 30 podcasts, I don't have to, or 30 episodes, I don't have to send 30 individual requests. I can right. compile the 30 into 30 individual queries, but send all of those queries in one request, and it'll give me all of the information back in in that one uh, one result, and then I can list it out as an aggregate form, um, which actually that produced and that ended up producing a blog post on DerekBailey.com, um, which was it's like two weeks old now. Wow, almost a month old. Yeah. On calculating the standard deviation using array.map and array.reduce, that, that blog post came from figuring all of this out for Sigma Leaf. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up using um, the code that I wrote in there to produce standard deviation and graph it on the, on the podcast report for Sigma Leaf. Nice. I, so I meant you... to do that this week, but I've, I've spent all my time blogging and and working on this landing page for Josh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask you if you'd had any chance, to, if you'd had a chance to do any other coding on it besides that. Yeah, no, it's just I've been trying to get to code, but for some reason I haven't been able to to concentrate very well this week. Even when I sit down and I focus and you know I shut out all the distractions, it's it's taking me a really long time to produce content this week. And so I basically have just done the two blog posts, answered a question for someone, and put together this uh, landing page for the cheat sheet. And I still haven't yeah. produced the cheat sheet. <laughs> yeah. Well, the landing page looks awesome. I I was looking at it right before we came on, and uh, yeah, I mean, we I guess we can't we can't show it. But <laughs> well, I can do a screen share. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure, John. At least. Well, let me see. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, it looks really, really good. So we're, this is for the um, for the AdWords camp. We're gonna try. Um, oh wow! Yeah. Right yeah, for AdWords, we're gonna try to do like the make um, uh, like cr basically the create a podcast and make a podcast type of right. keywords. Uh -huh. We're gonna send people here and try to collect some leads, and then the idea is that Derek will interact with them personally, probably for a while, right. and then. Eventually, we can turn that into an autoresponder. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I've got a, an email sitting in my inbox from someone um, that I need to answer. He's got some pretty interesting questions about um, he's going to have uh, three people um, it, uh, on, the, on the show on a regular basis. Two of them are going to be in the same room, and one of them is going to be remote. And he has a lot of equipment already. He's got mics and mixers and everything. So this would be a good opportunity to for me to to talk about um, what podcasters call uh, mix minus setup, where you have a, a mixer with microphones for everybody in the room, and then you have your computer running into the mixer as well, and then the output of that um, goes to whatever recording device you're using, whether it's your computer or an right. external recording device or whatever it is, and that that setup allows you to have people talking, but also allows you to have sound from your computer oh, playing right. into the podcast live while you're recording it, but yeah. also, you know, in the actual audio recording. So you, nice. you can do sound effects, and you can play music, and you can do, you know, people through Skype into mm -hmm. the, the actual mix. Nice. Yeah, more like a radio station, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I got a. I, I've seen a lot of posts on that subject um, on the the Google Plus group. Uh, so I got to go find those and and look into it and and get back to this guy. I'm gonna answer some of his some of his other questions first, and then uh, tell him that I'll I'll do the the research and and show him how to set that up. So hopefully that guy will turn into um, a customer. Yeah. Matt Kramer, one of our listeners that I mentioned last week as well. Um, he just launched a podcast as well, so. Oh, nice! That's the Cobra IO guy, right? Yeah, the Cobra IO guy. So yeah. if you hit mattkramer.com, you'll see a podcast button um, on his menu, and so he's got uh, two episodes, I think, uh, up now. Yeah. So he's um, he's got that rolling. So that's that's good to have him with on with Signal Leaf, and then. Um, haven't had a lot of new stuff customers. always looks good, too. Yeah. <laughs> guys I'm not sure if he does the design. Or, he he yeah. does it all. 
Nice. Yeah. He actually uh, um, a couple of months ago sent me a, a, like a a five minute rough idea for a new Signal Leaf landing page, and it was brilliant. Oh, oh nice. cool. So yeah, I mean, I, he he keeps offering to help me out, and I keep saying, yeah, let's let's do something, and then I never get back to him. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is a further acknowledgement of that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but Signal Leaf overall, overall is um, coming along. I'm I'm getting close to profitable. Um, I'm I'm like two hundred dollars away from from being profitable. Nice. So I, I think I'm at around um, three hundred and sixty monthly recurring revenue, which month to date I'm at two hundred and thirty six. With you know halfway through the month or yeah, halfway through the month, I'm at $236, and three months ago, $236 was my entire month of revenue. So right. there's definitely been growth there. I just need to, I think last week being at that conference threw me off, and then this week, I just, I'm having a hard time getting back into the swing with producing content, and I'm worried about Watch Me Code, and it actually took me like two and a half hours to, to publish everything on Watch Me Code yesterday to, to publish today's episodes because there were four episodes that I that I delivered and I had to write up a bunch of blog posts and upload them to YouTube and do all this stuff to get those going. So that threw me off my my day as well. Yeah. So. Hey, plus, plus you're doing this diet still, right? So. Yeah, and that's probably not helping either. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Derek, you're still sharing your screen, so if you decide oh. to go like check your bank balance or anything. Okay. I should probably <laughs> stop sharing my screen. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So, yeah, cool. this diet, I've, I've lost like three or four pounds in the last two weeks, yeah. which is nice, but it's not like... I don't know. I'm, it's been pretty hard for the last couple of days, I guess, and I'm wondering if that's how badly is this affecting my mental process, my ability to think straight and stay concentrated and whatnot. It's it's weird. I think if you can get over the the couple week hurdle, um, then it'll it'll help. Like I feel more focused now on yeah. this diet, but but of course I've been on this for two and a half months now, but. Right, um, but I feel a lot more sharp, and because I'm in work mode, like when I'm working now, it's like because I know that there's no food until dinner, so it's right. like there's nothing to distract. You know, once I've yeah. I've accepted that, uh, so yeah, so I don't know. It's it help. I also you know again take it with a grain of salt, but uh, the um, the warrior diet, you know, going I'm going through the audio book. He talks right. about that too. So he says that it increases your focus, but yeah, but we'll see. <laughs> I generally feel better throughout the day. Hey, that's for sure. I, yeah. I don't feel, I don't get as angry and upset as easily. I don't get <laughs> super hungry. I don't get. I mean, I seriously have that problem with diets where yeah, when I when I try to eat healthy and try to eat small meals, I end up getting really angry and really agitated. At, at nothing and it's it's really difficult for me to do and I'm generally finding that I'm not doing that now and I've I've also reduced the amount of caffeine that I drink as as a side effect of this diet because I know when I drink a ton of caffeine it makes me you know jittery and makes me hungry and and I end up eating a lot more than I should so I've I've reduced the amount of caffeine that I drink I'm down to like 24 to 36 ounces of, of Diet Dr. Pepper or, or whatever it is, Diet Coke. And that's seriously like half to a third of what I used to drink on a daily basis. That's good, yeah. Yeah. That's still a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's still a lot, but it's it's like yeah. a third of what, well, what I was doing. Yeah, previously. I guess I used to drink. You know, I take that back because I used to drink two. I For a long time, I drank two, I think, 20 ounce uh, diet cokes a day. Mm -hmm. So that's 40. So that's more than what you're talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm basically drinking three cans a day, and I've switched to cans because they're smaller. Yeah. Also because they yeah. recycle better. Because plastic doesn't recycle with the crap. Aluminum cans yeah. recycle amazingly. So it's it's yeah. better for better for me to have the smaller amount. It's easier to recycle. It's 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 oftentimes cheaper as well, which is nice. I'm not going so to two or three cans. Yeah, it's three cans a day basically. 
Sometimes yeah. only two. I want to totally cut out the diet soda out of my, but I'm still drinking. Well, I I I don't drink it during the day because I'm swallowing pills with water. So, right. but yeah, in the I've, evening, I've got a giant of water right here. That's good. Yeah. In the evening, I started taking uh drinking, or I, I allow myself to drink some diet soda, but I don't know. I should yeah. probably. Get it. I'm thinking about getting rid of all plastic containers and uh, okay. I oh, no. <laughs> I don't want to get framed as a as a nut because I'm I'm generally against these kind of people, but I'm thinking about getting rid of all plastic containers and getting only organics. Not because I think it'll harm you, uh, uh, like uh, like kill you or give you cancer, but because of one piece of research that I've been reading uh, of the estrogens, the plant mm -hmm. estrogens in it, and and um, I have a problem with stubborn fat. And my low, like, I mean, I'm pretty dang lean, and I still have like, uh, and 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 part of the reason of stubborn fat that that causes it can be estrogen. So I'm suspecting that I am I'm getting a, a high amount of estrogen. So, like, if you're gonna, because that 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 stuff's in everything. Like, if you, uh, if you like, it, it's in anything that contains soy. Like, soy is actually really bad. Mm -hmm. If you so eat mad. soybeans or tofu, yeah. then you're getting a ton of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I avoid soy but for the most part. But they put soy in everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, do. that's true. Uh, but but anyway, I'm not. I mean, because I'm usually against the whole organic and all of that stuff. Because because it's. I mean, for the for as far as just being healthy, it doesn't. I don't know. I haven't seen any. You know, but but I might actually get on the bandwagon just because of the estrogen part of it, which which I believe. I mean, because. The thing is, like, John's going to join the no poo movement. He's <laughs> going to come in with no, no unwashed hair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> the bush beard. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'm going to try that out because uh, cause I definitely have had a problem with stubborn fat. Like, it's just crazy how, you know, I've gotten so lean. Yeah. And I still have, you know, so I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It's worth a, worth a try. Yeah, but like Josh said, there's soy in... A lot of stuff. Oddly enough, though, there is no soybeans in soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it's what? Not. You're it's, safe there. Wow. Yeah, you're safe with soy sauce as long as oh, okay. you're not allergic to wheat. Because well, I is, love soy there, sauce. Yeah. There, there is gluten in soy sauce unless you get gluten-free soy sauce. Actually, I, 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 want, I heard once that soybeans were actually named after soy sauce and oh, not, the, not the other way around. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> Huh. Maybe they put them on the soybeans. I, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. So I have to. I have a quick story here. I have to tell before I. I okay. Talk about my stuff here. Um. So I had to step away a few minutes ago. So my wife texts me, "Will you come help me?" <laughs> uh -oh. and she knows that. You know, she knows we're doing right. this. So yeah, so it must be important. Okay, I better go. I better go check on this. So I go up there, and so what had happened was my youngest, who's just a little over two. Um, they got for 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 uh, an early birthday present for my oldest. Um, they got this this car set, and they're they're just like they have a motor in them, and you push a button and they they just go. They mm -hmm. run around a little track. So my wife was sitting on the floor with, working on her laptop, and the youngest comes up, and he gives her a big hug, you know, and a kiss, and he puts the car on her head and pushes Tangle. the button. <laughs> sucked in. Her hair. Oh, <laughs> nice. no. so I go up there, and she's got the car like. Oh, and then he he decided he wanted it back, so uh -huh. he's yanking, you know, trying to get it off. So she was trying to text me while he's like yanking the car <laughs> in her hair. Yeah, and uh, he's so he's funny because nice. he's, he's so snuggly. He he, he uses snuggle snuggling as, yeah. a, as a form of treachery. Like he'll do that. <laughs> yeah. He'll like he'll snuggle you and then he'll headbutt your nose or something. <laughs> um, Got to get in close. Yeah, so we had to. We I try. I got most. I got, got most of it untangled and we had to cut cut the. Uh, yep. Cut the rest uh, off. You know? Yeah, when I was like 15, I was playing with some silly putty with a cousin of mine. Oh, gosh. For whatever reason, I decided that I wanted to get an impression of his hair. <laughs> <laughs> I put the silly putty in his hair and smashed it down. <laughs> It didn't come out. 
<laughs> That's funny. I got one of those texts yesterday. I was on a call, and my wife, or she called me. I was like, why the heck are you calling? Like, first of all, I'm on the phone, right. and you're in the house. Like, why are you calling me? And then my daughter kind of peeks her head in the door, and she's kind of yelling, so, but she doesn't come all the way in. And then when I come out, my wife was like, do you have any idea why why I t called you and why your daughter came running in your office? And I was like, no. She said, she locked me out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, okay, that's a good reason. That's, I guess yeah. that that's would qualify as an emergency. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, yeah, so anyway... Um, so I, not a whole like so I've had some I've had some interesting opportunities pop up this week, um, some of which I think I'm not going to be able to take advantage of. But uh, so uh, my my uh, my on my my free, um, copywriting internship, um, my mentor has an opportunity. Somebody's interested in having some some copywriting done. He was thinking of referring them to me, uh, which would be awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I don't think I have time. Um, so with that, yeah, that that was that was pretty cool, and just like uh, the amount of interest that I'm getting with the, the skill set that I'm working on, like people want to talk to me, you know, and I'm not, I think I'm not quite there yet in terms of, um, you know, being able, being ready to like, you know, start taking on clients in a big way, but mm -hmm. I'm getting, I'm getting there pretty fast, and and the skills, I, I'm surprised how easy it is to get people to talk to me about this stuff. Yeah, nice. So yeah, so that's been pretty sweet. Um. I, I yeah so I also uh, so I, I approached somebody about helping me out with Sublime and uh, basically taking over my list and yep. I'm doing emails and everything and he's interested in, in doing it so nice. uh, yeah so I, I will probably be talking more about that when I have more details but yeah he's uh, he's very interested and that would pretty much take that completely off my plate without letting it die so I'm yep. I'm pretty stoked. I'm pretty stoked about that. Um, I mean, just gosh, like not being able to, to use that asset without you know and maintain it without without having to spend ten hours a week myself. Mm -hmm. Gosh, so much so much stress coming off. Right? Um, but yeah, so that's that's mainly been that's been most of it. Um, I also I had a kind of an interesting little bit of self analysis this morning um, little realization so I um, so this copywriting internship that I've been doing has been pretty stressful and mm -hmm. um, you know I'll get I'll get I'll get assignments from my mentor and I, I go through this initial like panic freak out mode every time I get yeah. an assignment <laughs> and it's like you know oh, I can't, oh gosh I can't do this um, and I, I, ever since I learned about this about copywriting as a as a discipline I've been really really interested in it and I, I basically wanted to do it as soon as I found out that it existed um, but I have been really I've been really I think I've mentioned this but I've been really afraid like I've been wanting to pursue it but I just felt like I couldn't do it um, there's just something inside me that was holding me back mm -hmm. and I think a big big chunk of it was um, so my last my, my first my first two jobs out of college were both uh, mainly writing was what I was doing. I was working at colleges, and I was putting together the alumni magazines um, and like other marketing type of materials. And I really enjoyed the job, um, but in both cases, I kind of came away from those jobs feeling like I'd failed um, because I really struggled with deadlines and getting stuff out on 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 time. Um, part of it was like my first job; I was literally putting together. 40, 50, I forget the number, but it was somewhere between 50 and 100 pieces of printed material a year. And um, anywhere from brochures to like full 48 page magazines. Mm -hmm. And the magazines in particular always were late. <laughs> uh, and well, usually it was my stuff that was, that was late. You know, I was kind of the, I was the bottleneck. Yeah. Right. So yeah. So and so and then my last job, my my second one, I only lasted about eight months there, and I didn't get fired, but they were probably going to fire me. <laughs> so I quit basically um, to avoid getting fired. Right. And so that job in particular, the issue there, like, it was partly personal personality conflicts, but then also like I was just I was just late with the the, the magazine 
Um, I mean, she gave me an unreasonable, my boss gave me an unreasonable deadline, but I was late and I didn't communicate well about it, so it's kind of, you know, there was a, I definitely was at fault too. So I, I came away from that experience really, really feeling like I'd failed um, at, at the whole, like kind of like, at, at the whole writing thing, like I felt like a failure. And um, so I've, anytime, like with anything writing related, I think I have that baggage now. Um, where I, I really like writing and it's really fulfilling for me, but then anytime I actually go to do it, I feel like that I'm going to fail at this. I mean, you get that anyway as a writer. I think that's pretty mm -hmm. normal. But then I have this additional experience that I had where, you know, it was... And I, I've, I've overcome, like, a lot of the issues I had back then were mainly just organization and time management. Like, I didn't have... I was terrible at being organized. And I got after that, I got into GTD... And I really learned, like, okay, here's a calendar. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. here's how to use right. a calendar. <laughs> um, you know, which literally I'd never, I'd never, like, at, at the college jobs, nobody used, we, had, we all had Outlook calendars. Nobody used them. I mean, scheduling a meeting was this epic, you know, 10 email <laughs> marathon. Like, heaven forbid you need to have, like, anybody from the administration, you know, like a VP or something there. Because those people didn't use their calendars at all, and their secretaries never knew what they were, where they were going to wow, be. Wow, that's weird. Yeah, so it was really dysfunctional. So I never learned, I never learned just how to be a basic professional <laughs> and use a right. calendar. And everything. Um, so I've kind of overcome that. I've gone through GTD, and I'm, I'm over, I, I'm, I don't need the, that crutch anymore. Um, so I've realized though, in doing this writing internship, that, um all of my fear, like all the stress that I've been feeling about the writing and the assignments has actually been not due to the writing itself. Like this is a big shift actually. So the stress has only come in when I don't have the information I need. Like, because my mentor is really busy. Uh, he's running a business. He doesn't always have time to give me all the information up front. Right. Um, and I don't like bugging him, you know, so I'm always yeah. reluctant to bug him with questions. But um, all the stress I've had has basically been around not having the information. Like once I feel like I have enough information to go, the writing's been no problem at all. Um, mm -hmm. And that's a huge shift. Like the writing used to be, I used to like sit down to write and like, you know, it was like the resistance that in the art of war would would come come after me <laughs> and tra drag me out of the room and yeah. pummel me. Um, but I'm, I'm basically over that. Like this morning, I, so I have a, uh, a, a big autoresponder sequence to do tomorrow. And I just like I was freaked out about it, and then once I had a plan for how to tackle it, um, how to tackle and what I wanted each piece to be, I just sat down. I've just been, and this morning I just started, you know, blowing through one of the emails, and my, I hit my three pomodoros, and I was I, I wanted to keep going. Like I was having fun with the, the actual writing part of it. So that was that's been like just realizing where that the sh the source of the stress has shifted for me. Um, and that, like, actually producing content is actually pretty easy for me now. Nice. So, yeah, that was I, I was really excited when I realized that this morning. That's good. Yeah, I mean, part of that is having the plan to makes a huge difference. I always try to to remind myself, like, when you sit down at the desk to start the day, have mm -hmm. a plan. I mean, I've got it kind of in my ritual, but then also be willing to alter the plan, like, because things end up taking longer. So, so then, mm -hmm. when you're starting to feel stressed out, go back. Go back to the playing board and now revise the plan to what is the current right. thing, and then you know, and, and then keep on because the more that you come into check with the reality, like you have these checkpoints of, of reality, then you have less suffering and less stress yeah. because you're in tune. You know what's going to happen. It's like I planned my week this week and a bunch of stuff happened, and so I had to replan the week and move board things around but then it, as I did that now I feel now I don't feel like I'm behind because I have it I'm you know where I'm supposed yeah. to be so so definitely I, I can see how the planning makes it makes it huge. yeah that, that's exactly what I talked about in my email last week to my mailing list how plans are essentially useless but planning is indispensable and yeah. uh, you have to be able to adjust your plan when reality strikes yeah, yeah. I actually so last week, I uh, last Saturday when I did my plan for the week, um, I realized that I've done well with reducing the amount of stuff that I am involved in because I got through like Monday or Tuesday and I didn't have anything that I had to do. Right. Like, oh, interesting. 
um, what am I going to do? So I planned some stuff. I ended up not doing a lot of it because I had, like, with this internship, stuff is coming up really, is coming up pretty quickly and it's due quickly. Yeah, so I kind of was, I figured that I'd probably get an assignment midweek and I did. So, you know, I was kind of expecting that. Um, but yeah, it was, it was cool. It was like, okay, ah, <laughs> I don't have like 10 times more things to do this week than I, you know. Right. A, a lot of it's just been reducing mental commitments too. Um, just saying, okay, I'm not going to worry about that. Yep. Yep. So, but that's, yeah, that's helped me stay, that's helped me stay a little pretty flexible. And re this is, uh, this has been relatively low stress. I mean, it's, it's stressful, but it's not, you know, I'm not freaking out. Yeah, it's good. I mean, you know, it's, it also helps to think about what's the worst that could happen too. It's like yeah, exactly. you'll still you'll still yeah. live. You'll still right. eat. You know, <laughs> you know, you, or you'll eat once. Yeah, <laughs> just, just have your one meal a day. Don't yeah, <laughs> there's always that to look forward to. Yeah. yeah so that, that's actually an interesting thing. That's something that's been going on in my head for a while now. It it started number of weeks ago with that email from I think it was Jared Drysdale on how do you, would you recognize if you're living the life and we had a big discussion about that and and that subject came up again in after hours conversations last week at the conference I was talking with a couple of people and um, you know I, I I looked at him and said you know I'm I'm slowly trying to realize every day you know, that I am living a good life and that I have met so many goals and, and have done so many amazing things and have been very blessed and very lucky and and very privileged in a lot of a lot of ways to be able to to do what I'm doing. And yeah. and he looked at me with this look of confusion is how have you not realized that years ago? <laughs> you know, do you make more than twenty six thousand dollars a year? Well yeah, of course I do then yes, you are living a good life because the vast majority of people don't make more than that. Yeah. So it, it helps set in, again, some of the realization of, you know, what, you know, all three of us have been able to do with our lives and, and where we are now and and where we, we may have come from with, you know, I, I have a story about how I was literally a few days away from being homeless when I lived in Dallas because... I was going to get kicked out of my apartment for equal housing opportunity and I didn't have a job and I mean it was going to be a giant nightmare and I I got all kinds of stories about stuff like that and so looking at where I've come from and where I am now and the realization you know the still slowly everyday realization of the good life that I am living is is helping with the stress and the constant pulling my hair out and you know, I'm not as worried about Watch Me Code now as I was a few months ago when I first started seeing this downward trend. You know, I'm I'm not panicking and throwing in the towel yet. It's it's disturbing, and I don't like seeing the downward trend. But at the same time, you know, I'm realizing, okay, you know, I'm still making 2,200 bucks a month off of this. That's for the amount of work that I'm putting into it. I'm I'm not going to complain about that. That's still good money. For the amount of work I'm putting into it, so it's it's those realizations, you know, every day that that I'm doing well, and yeah, things are not as well as I want them to be, but when are they ever as well as you want them to be? As soon as they are, you want something else. Yeah, that's the thing is um is it, uh, I don't want to say the word adaptation. It's something else where you. Uh, like acclimation, acclimation. Yeah. That's right. the word. okay. We, there's a huge number of things that we acclimate to, right? In uh, in, in life, uh, if you become rich, you'll be, you'll acclimate to it, and pretty soon it'll you know just like when you buy a new car, and then right. three months later it's not so exciting. You know, you acclimate to whatever. I don't know, man. Um, I, I still get a thrill every time I push that button and those minivan doors open. <laughs> 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 but acclimation happens for yeah. a large portion of our life. But there's a few things. I mean, we can purposely try to unacclimate ourselves by reminding us by being thankful and reminding ourselves of how much we have. Yes. But there's also things that don't acclimate, which are certain. Like like the key, I think, to ha to true happiness is is uh, is is certain things like um, 
like uh, like doing a good job or work like that. Like you always feel good after putting in a good day of solid right. work. Right. Like that that you never acclimate to that. Uh, and there's a bunch of other. Uh, again, I, I was reading uh, a great great thing to read is Seneca's letters. Uh, I'm I've been reading through those. I'm still there's a lot of them, but man, he really talks about that about like what is true happiness and like you know you can become rich and whatever and all this, but you know having wisdom, being being you know being grounded, like whatever's within you. Like not having desire for something because if you if you have if you desire something like it's it's kind of like you know the way I distilled it down from what he was saying was basically like if you desire something then you're always going to be in in want for that thing right you're not happy you're not satisfied right um, if you have something um, and you and you can't let it go of what you have then you're going to be afraid of losing it. Right. So neither one of those are good. So you you kind of have to minimize mm -hmm. desire and then and then minimize the um like because if you achieve what you desire, then you'll be afraid of losing it. So so need so you can't actually you have to progress within yourself to come to the point of realizing that what um what's you know what's really important you already possess. Like you don't need anything else. Really, just your mind and and your and your health and be, beyond that, you know, there's you. That's enough to be thankful for and to be happy about, and to if you can learn to live and accept that, and be and to live in the moment instead of waiting for the future, and, and to live with that very thing that you already have, a sound mind and and reason, then then you're like you're free. You become free of this because you, otherwise you're in bondage to what you desire or what you already possess, which you are afraid of losing. Right. So. But yeah, it's been it's been impacting me quite a bit, and I've been a lot because I I realized that I lived a lot of my life like waiting for the next milestone. Again, like same right. thing with you. It's like, well, John, how much Constantly. more success could you want? I mean, right. you, you're you're making like ten times as much money as you're making when you thought you were doing great, and or you know, or you know, you have all these things. You could do what you want. You could retire if you want. You know, but it it doesn't matter. None of that really really matters. What really matters is like is because it is is not looking forward to the next. So I'm like, well, what a, what about when I do this or this happens or I can't wait until this is over with or, and now I'm trying to cut all that and just say, look, today is a great day because it's a day that I'm living. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, whatever's going to happen in the day is going to happen today. There's nothing. There is no tomorrow. There is no yesterday. There's only today. And so let's, you know, if you're going to be happy about anything, be happy about today. And by by moving my mind into that, it's been a lot. Uh, I I've, I felt a lot more at peace. So. Yeah, I'm slowly getting there. It helps to stop and think about that, and mm -hmm. you know, when I when I look at my situation overall, I definitely see my situation in a much more positive light than I used to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One thing that's really been helping me, I I've been reading. Um, I've been reading uh, some of the books by the guy that wrote the original 80-20 book, uh, mm -hmm. Richard Koch, and uh, he like um, one of the things that he talks a lot about is that action drives out thought. And I've definitely been, I've definitely always been, you know, go 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 go. Yeah. And if you're always in, if you're always in that mode, you never actually poke your head up and think about the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you. And I, I've, I've kept myself in that, in that action mode for <laughs> ten years, you know. Yeah. And and you can't you can't actually appreciate anything. Yep. When when you're you know that I mean, that that sort of that sort of drives the mindset that you're talking about, John. Was like, if you know if you're if you're because I'm very goal oriented, and mm -hmm. if you're always you know if you're if you let yourself be always in production mode, then. You know, you can you'll just invent an infinite number of things that you need to work on, and you're never so cutting back my commitments lately has really helped me more relax and uh, just start to think. You know, like I never would have thought to. It's silly, but I never would have thought to like try to find somebody else to run my sublime stuff if I had been just in production mode. You know. Right. Right. Um. 
that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. I mean, it's hard. It's one of the struggles. Like I said, it's the more entrepreneurial. If you're working a regular job, if you're not doing entrepreneurial stuff at all, if you're not trying to build your own business and stuff, you don't right. get faced with these life dilemmas. Like, because you just have a root, a script that you have to follow, mm -hmm. and so you don't right. you don't. Get, but you know anyone who's who's going through building their own business of to some degree doing entrepreneurial type of things you get smacked harder by this wave because it's like you have the options are available to right. you and you are responsible for your success or failure so right I'm trying to think there was a other thing I was going to talk about uh, that was going on uh, I'm mostly working on getting my slides ready for the I've been trying to get I think I am gonna just go MacBook Pro get rid of the surface I dual booted it with boot camp mm -hmm. and I I think I like that that's that seems to be did those uh, those drivers end up working yep the touchpad plus plus drivers okay. work nicely so I can actually have the Windows 8 gestures inside nice. there okay, and cool. it seems to run better than in the VMware I can also go mm -hmm. into VMware and run if I needed to run Mac and Windows at okay. the same time but Re my reality use case is I'm either going to be running one or the other. Right. So, um, you and know. you got to be careful about boot camp anyways, running it inside of VMware. Because you, you, uh, at least when I was doing that, I found that the way I had Windows configured for drive letters and the way I, I needed things oh. set up and, and whatnot was incompatible between boot camp and running it in, in a virtual yeah. machine. Yeah. It, it would it would change drive letters on me and a lot of my stuff wouldn't work anymore. But yeah. pretty pretty much the only time I would ever do that now, as I thought, is if I'm doing Xamarin stuff for right. a demo and I'm That's needing right. to have a have a you know, running in Visual Studio in, which is is not likely right now. I would just either be running in one mode or the other. It reboots so fast that it doesn't. I don't even care. Right. Um, and 128 gig per partition is plenty with Dropbox and everything. So. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty happy with that with that setup. Uh, I've been organizing my stuff, trying to simplify. Got my Dropbox down. Got rid of my backup plan, and just I'm using Dropbox. Yeah, I right. wanted. To, so okay, so you're working on a 228 gig partitions, then with 300 gigs in Dropbox. How are you? How are you? Are you you heavy heavily using Selective Sync then, or? I've got my main PC, my desktop oh, PC, okay. yeah. which has two, ter two, two terabyte hard drives that I was using for backup and like uh, one is a duplication and, and it's got like two, it's got four 128 gigabyte SSDs in it <laughs> that are rated. So Holy I've got God. tons of room and speed on that thing. And I've got my Dropbox folder sitting on one of those two terabyte drives there. That's the, that's the, uh, the 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 master Dropbox folder it has everything right mm -hmm. um, and then I have selective sync on my laptop I, I just just in fact the only thing I found I need was I have a folder in Dropbox called simple programmer where my simple programmer stuff goes mm -hmm. like uh, that I use constantly and then I have one called um, whip work in progress mm -hmm. and when I work on stuff I work on it in the whip if it's in progress uh, so and then I have the simple programmer stuff and then everything else if I need it I can get it from the Dropbox website right or it's archives of my projects mm -hmm. and stuff so it's not a, if it's not a daily use or weekly use type of thing it really doesn't need to be like mm -hmm. synced up because it's easy enough to access and get if, if you need it so and I'm finding that works pretty good um, so I yeah, I'm thinking of doing that same thing with uh, my Synology so I've got the um, you know the storage device there, and I could just have everything. Like, so that has about 300 gigs on it, and I take I take photos. One of my freelance things that I do is take photos. So that's those are fairly you know fairly. That's like a couple. That's like three or four hundred megs every time I do that. So I don't want all that stuff on any particular machine. I also tend to rebuild my machines a lot. So yeah, <laughs> if I had like even if it was 300 gigs, I only get 200 gigs. Of download a month on my with my uh, cable provider, so we're we're actually going over that this month, and I'm going to get nag nag notices and everything. But uh, yeah, so that would that like if I had to download all that stuff even once, it would put me <laughs> well over my quota for the month. Um, yeah, yeah, but you would need all of that stuff at once, yeah, right? I mean, but, yeah, putting it on the Synology because I'd never. I mean, that I don't think I'll ever rebuild. You know, it's pretty. 
It's a little yeah. Linux machine, and it's pretty solid. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of I'm liking that. I'm liking that. I, I wanted to do this a while ago, but I couldn't figure out. I couldn't figure out like where like I wanted to get rid of the Synology actually and just go with like Dropbox or OneDrive or Google Drive or something. Um, but yeah, I, th I think I, I definitely need some place to have the master. Yeah, and and I'm okay with like the single redundancy of the cloud plus it being mm -hmm. on my. I had I might set up another double redundancy with a thing with a like a script or something yeah, once a month. Not, but I, I've got a time machine uh, for my backups, my primary backups on on my Mac, and then I've got a Western Digital external storage device. It's a Thunderbolt device, which is nice, so it's super fast. Yeah. It's, it's got four terabytes of, of uh, two or four, I don't remember, two or four terabytes of storage, and I put all of my old podcasts and screencasts and, you know, long-term storage stuff over there, things that I... I, w I don't want to get rid of them, but I don't want to keep them on my primary drive anyways. I mean, I've got 768 gigs on my primary system, but it's getting close to being full because of all my stupid pictures in, in iPhoto. So I yeah. need to move iPhoto over there as well, but make a backup of iPhoto and put it over there or something. But, yeah, it's I like Dropbox. I do a lot of work-in-progress stuff on Dropbox. Um, I like having the external storage for long-term storage stuff, and I definitely like having Time Machine time capsule backups. That's really nice. Yeah, yeah another alternative I looked at was um, Amazon, like the Iceberg. Mm -hmm. Glacier. And then, yeah, Glacier. <laughs> um, Glacier's one the Linux. <laughs> Amazon <laughs> Lettuce. <laughs> it's, uh, it's one cent per gig per month. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's pretty dang cheap. <laughs> you yeah. know, 300 gig is like $3. Did you read um, the fine print on that, though? Like, uh, they're literally storing that stuff on tape. So if you need it... Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, if you need well, it, it takes hours or a day to get it back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but that's good for, like, you know, certain certain archive material. Yeah. But, but when you look at it, the pricing for S3 is $0.03 cents a gig. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it, that's still pretty dang yeah. cheap. You can get a reduced price on on S3 though if you put it in the the um, the reduced redundancy storage on S3. It goes down to like two cents a gig. Oh, okay. So yeah. So I mean that's an alternative too. But I'm paying a hundred dollars a year, I think, for Dropbox Pro for yeah. a terabyte. Yeah. Yeah. So at that, it's like yeah. I mean, if I'm not using the whole terabyte, I might as well, you know. Plus, you can zip stuff up too. That like I zip all my my Pluralsight courses up. Dropbox which, is an integrated part of my development life at this point. I <laughs> yeah. can't get rid of it. Yeah. So, but I did get rid of my crash plan, even though I love their service because yeah. it. I can just consolidate to Dropbox. I'm trying to consolidate things, get things kind of. Yeah. Going I need sweet. to go through and look at all the services I'm subscribed to again and get rid of some. You know, I, I paid off my student loans last month, which was nice. Oh, high five. Nice. Yeah. Not that anymore. That was literally something that I thought would never happen. And I got a, I got a check from them in the mail saying, "You overpaid your loans. Here's 150 bucks back." So that that's nice. So that's like 350 bucks a month that I don't have to pay. But I I still want to go and see if I can find another three or four hundred dollars worth of things that I can stop paying for every month. Yeah. I'm really trying to to reduce my monthly spending and get myself back down under my my income levels again, especially with yeah. me code and things on the decline. I really need to start looking at that now before I have to panic about it. Right. Yeah, yeah I want to do that too. We need a new category for services that we love but cancel anyway. They're not yeah. financial sponsors. <laughs> yeah. For me, I'm definitely going to ask lead pages. I haven't been paying for that. I, I bought the one year. Yeah, I paid for the plan. year of lead pages and too. So I'm definitely going to ask that. I'll yeah. probably... Yeah. My problem um, is I, I'm using their lead boxes. Yeah, uh, and I've got some lock in there. I gotta get rid of. I gotta find something to replace the lead boxes. Yeah, and, and I'm doing that on my old Los Techies blog as well as Derek Bailey mm -hmm. and Signal Leaf. So it, you you can replace it fairly easily though. I know. I just don't. I hate taking the time to do it. Yeah, that's the trouble. Is, is it, what, what, what's a better use of my time? Spending six hours to do that. Or spending 300 bucks a year for the lead boxes. 
You know? I don't know. Yeah. Over time, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It would take two years, three years to to recuperate that money mm -hmm. versus, you know, it would take uh, – it's it's hard. I can't do math in public. <laughs> $300 a year versus, you know, $600 worth of work. Let's How many programmers does it take to do simple arithmetic? More I'm than me. Awful at that. Yeah. You could hire it out too. Yes. I mean, uh, no doubt. Yeah, I can figure something out. But I, I definitely want to drop it. Yeah. I, I want to get rid of Mailchimp too. That's like mm -hmm. fifty bucks a month yeah. to get rid of. I just, I really, I just need to import all my old email addresses and then be done with it. Yeah. That's easier than you think too. <laughs> it's really not hard. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. You know, I. I. I have my export already. Um. So all of my new subscribers come in through drip at this point. Oh gosh. Yeah. Um, they already do. So I've already, so I, all I need to do is send my export file to the drip support guys and say, Hey, can you import these 4,000 people? Oh and yeah. Done with it. Yeah. That'll yeah, be that's like five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Go do it today. <laughs> Save yourself some money. Yeah, And then I can put MailChimp into pay as you go mode and the only reason I want to do that is because I want to get all of my old emails that I've sent out of there. And yeah, you can get those archive. out if you go into free. I mean, yeah, you either way, but you can still get them out. You can have you have full access to everything if you're on the free plan. You just can't send. Right. Because I've done that. So. Right. That's that's so yeah. I, I need to do that. So before you go, Josh, I got a question about the the cheat sheet landing page. Yeah. Uh, is this three-step cheat sheet? What's the 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 higher level goal or target for this cheat sheet? Is it is it for brand new people that just need to get started, or is it more like what the wording says? This is the what you need to get launched at a higher level. Um, that is a good question. I would. I mean, I think if if we're if we're looking at people that are getting started and right. don't know anything, mm -hmm. three things is insufficient. It's well. What I was thinking was like taking. So I was basing that off of your blog post, the one where you had like, here's your podcasting studio, and it was like your right. MacBook. Yeah. Kind of so basically, yeah. I mean, I don't think it's going to be like uh, you know these three these three steps are. I mean, just just signing up for a signal leaf account is more than three steps, right? Right. right. So, so I think I think so it would it has be, to be a higher level. Yeah. Yeah. Not, what, the the thing that's been going around in my head this morning, I've been working on this page, is I think it. Well, let me just run the idea by across you. Um, the three steps or the three things you need, I should say, would be episodes, hosting and marketing like a blog. Mm -hmm. So if I put, if I can create a beautiful cover sheet, you know, beautiful in quotes, right. cover sheet that lists those three things for the cheat sheet and then basically have three one-page blog posts at, as the, the next three pages, one for each mm -hmm. of the three items, you know, you need episodes here, record stuff and edit and blah, blah, right. blah, and, and then you need hosting, you know, here's oh, what is hosting and why do you need it? So I just wrote that blog post. So top right. Of paste. Right. Um, and then the, the third one, um, blogging, you know, I, I wrote that blog post five or six months ago. So copy right. again. So I can, I can probably produce a, a decent, you know, three level, three point um, cheat sheet with three pages of additional information there. Mm -hmm. Um, well, okay. So don't feel don't feel too con super constrained. I mean, like the idea here is really we want some sort of resource that is like a minimal, right? An absolute like bare minimum. You have a podcast. But three night. is a good number for three is a great number. Yeah, ecologically and otherwise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if the three steps could be like you know record your re record your episodes. Um, you know, set up your hosting and publish your episodes or something like that. Right. You know, um, I mean, that would be fine. I think that would work well. Yeah. Um, it would be great, like, if we could keep it to one page, um, you could have it as, like, I mean, I, I, like, I think the, the I, I'd like to test it, but I think that the idea of a one-pager 
um, get, when, when we're promoting something that we claim is simple, <laughs> is probably a good is probably a good thing. Um, but if we could like with 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 cheat sheets, a lot of times they're they're really dense. Like they're it's one page, but it's pretty dense. So if you could if you could boil the you know those three steps down, um, and keep it all in one page, mm-hmm. even if I mean if the font you know, the font's pretty small and everything, and you can ha- kind of even go with bullet point format or something underneath that, mm-hmm. um, that would be I think that would work too. So either way, I mean what you're suggesting would probably be faster to produce. And uh, honestly, at this point, and anything it would be good. Anything we can get that kind of fulfills the promise we're making is good enough because we really we really want to test the conversions on this page and right. test the idea versus like you know, if we put a ton of work into the giveaway and the idea just bombs then you know then we're wasting your time so true yeah so I I would say don't get too hung up on it let's come up with something that you think fulfills the promise or or, or if you if there's something a little like a modification or something that you think would be a little better that would be easier for you to do that's fine yeah too. it's I just guess, a placeholder really right i guess the I, I like the three things idea though for a lot of reasons including a lot of psychology reasons and how we think about things and group things but the the, the real question came down to you know would it be better to do you know episodes hosting and a blog or would it be better to do you know record and set up your hosting and publish it. I think it would be better to make it actionable. So like the actual yeah, I would I would vote for the action steps. I don't know. Okay. What do Record, you host, publish. Yeah, yeah, don't put the marketing part because that's gonna be too it's gonna overwhelm people. Right. Yeah. So okay. yep. you're just about getting it started. Right. And I and I can do a, you know, from here, go read blah 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 or whatever. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, cool. I think I can I can probably at least get a rough draft of something along those lines this afternoon. Sweet. Oh, I got a question for you guys. Um, okay. I am preparing three talks, right? So I, I have slides in November. <laughs> that that are okay, right? But uh-huh. they're not great. I'm not the. Um, so I'm starting to go out to Odesk. I, I'm I've got a couple of people hired to like do. You know, I've been it's been hard to find someone who can do good slides on Odesk, but what what are your thoughts on that? Do you know anyone who does slides? Is it worth taking the time to have them professionally, kind of you know quote professionally done? Like have a designer do your redo your slides? I would not do that until you've given the talks at least three times. I see. That's a good because you're gonna get mm-hmm. feedback the first time, yeah. you're gonna get feedback the second time, and the third time you're probably gonna have it done. But you want to make sure that you really have it done. Good. Point. That's a good point. Yeah. Okay. I've got some trial guys that I'm doing on Odesk just to like a $25 job and see how they do. And then like, because I my goal is to find someone who can do this for me as right. my go-to person. So I'm kind of still like doing that. But I wasn't sure if I was going to give them the rest of them or I was going to wait. So I'll probably I'll probably wait, or I might have them do it if it's cheap enough and then knowing that I will have them revise it. Right. Um, the other thing, I, I found templates online. I was going to investigate that today too to see if I could just create my own if I have a really good template. Um, that was- yeah, creating your own templates is, is pretty easy. Um, it's, you know, look it up. It might take you an hour to figure it out, but I've done it a half a dozen times at this point. Yeah, I've created templates I've got, but I'm talking about buying a template that's like a more polished looking. Oh, I hate those, honestly. Um, Personally, I I think most of the templates that you buy are cluttered and noisy, and they are visually designed very, very well, but the visual design that they present causes causes the visual design Mm -hmm. to get in the way of the content. And so my my content my my templates tend to be very simple, um, very minimal, um, and and show lots of images and with very little text. If you if you haven't read it yet, go buy the book. Pre- the Zen of oh no, yeah, pre- presentations Zen. Oh okay, yeah, that's a, okay. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah. it's a brilliant book that will change the way you you do presentations and I don't follow it as well as I should, but I've certainly taken a lot of, of hints from it over the years. 
Okay, I'll need to, yeah, I definitely need to check out that book. All right, I, I guess I'll figure it out from here, but uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. I mean, I've done obviously lots of slides because I've done right, like, yeah. tons of Pluralsight courses, but I kind of wanted yeah. to see if I could take it to the next level. But, yeah. Oh, I also sold four monitors this week. Nice. Holy cow. <laughs> wow. Man, I you have to, to just like, what, half a dozen now? I've got two, two 4K monitors. Yep. <laughs> Uh, but I have to tell you, after watching the Apple thing yesterday, I'm I'm not kidding when I say at this point in time, my next PC, like desktop PC, will be a Mac, yeah. which is something I never thought I'd say. But they finally hit the key thing to me is they said, hey, you want a 5K monitor? And it's so thin, and it's all integrated in there, and you can run Windows on it anyway, and it's right. good hardware. I mean, it's twenty five hundred dollars starting. I think my configuration would be thirty three hundred bucks, but I don't know. I, I paid that much for my MacBook Pro, so yeah, <laughs> it's a brilliant device. That 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 new iMac. The the thing that keeps pissing me off about Apple is they keep updating the iMac and the Thunderbolt monitor, the standalone monitor, mm, yeah. is still two and a half years old. Yeah, they're, they're not. Don't don't expect them to upgrade that thing because I'll tell you. If you, because it doesn't make sense, because now you can buy an iMac. I mean, they want to sell the iMac. They want to sell that 5K monitor. So it's. I'm never going to buy that. With a free computer, essentially. I mean, no, that's, it, with with a fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred dollar computer built into it. The, I, I, I yeah. want my thousand dollar 5K Thunderbolt monitor. That's well, <laughs> yeah, a thousand dollar. I I don't know. I guess if I could get a thousand dollar 5K. Thunderbolt monitor. That, that's what you're getting in the iMac. You're, you're paying a thousand dollars for the monitor, then you're paying fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred for the Mac. Well, there's no comparison right now. That's the thing is, there's nothing on the market. The only thing on the market that compares to what they're they're selling monitor wise is actually like a is actually a three thousand dollar monitor. Right. So that's why I say that that's what their whole strategy. I mean, it, it's worked for me. I will, mm -hmm. I will glut, like if as soon as this PC is ready, desktop PC, if we're ready to go right now, I totally get rid of my two 4K monitors, go with one simple, very lightweight, you know, clean interface, all in one, mm -hmm. got the monitor piece, just hook up a keyboard and mouse, and it's powerful enough 5K monitor with the with way better, uh, you know, uh, color reproduction quality and, and, uh, and, and refresh rate than anything that I, than my 4K monitors, easily I would take that. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see. You could use the Surface when you're on the go. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to have to ship the Surface that, or sell yeah, the Surface. Sell, sell it. Yeah. Sell it. Yeah. All right. All right. We should probably wrap this up. <laughs> All right. Cool. All so right. Guys. See you guys next <laughs> week. Next week. Yep. Want to start a business, but you just know how to code. Listen to John, Josh, and Dan.